So it's just a basic saw wave for unison and uh, for the processing it's, oh, uh, oh. So I was giving feedback on one of my subscribers' songs, and I said, add more processing to that sound. And then chat asks, what do you mean by process a sound more? And uh, this is it. By the way, I'm live on Twitch every week where I listen to your music, answer production questions, make dumb stuff, or just play Valorant. So go follow me on there, come hang out and send me your music. Let me show you this cool trick that Rez uses to make her basses. Today, we talk about the serum preset and how to make it. I show you the effects in serum that spice it up, the Ableton stock plugin processing that make it resi, and final touches and how you can customize this sound for yourself. Let's make the serum preset. So step one is serums oscillators and I'm a basic shapes bitch. So here we go. The first oscillator needs a nice clean tone. So I use a saw wave. That is wavetable position two, and I'm gonna turn unison up by four so it stacks that sound. I'm turning detune down a bit because I want the layer stacks, but not to have it too detuned. Next, turn on the sub oscillator, and I set it to a full sine wave. It's the second one on the list here. I'm gonna turn it down one octave. And I want to combine the sub oscillator with the oscillator A that we just made. And the best way to do that is with this warp knob here and setting it to FM. So you can do FM from B, which is what I've done before, where I combine this one with this one. But today I want to combine the sub with the A oscillator. So instead I go FM from sub oscillator. If you want nasty basses, you just play around with this knob. Liter that's already there. <laughs> cool, right? Okay, fine. I know we're not there yet, but here is some crazy sauce. This is what I call spreading the octave, and it's exactly as it sounds, if you know what I mean. No, you don't? Okay. So oscillator one, I'm going to turn it up three octaves, and the semitone up by seven. Now, as a music theory nerd, putting the semitones up by seven semitones adds a nice dissonance to any sound and when combined with FM you get some really cool tones that'll be later pulled out with OTT and of course I'm gonna use OTT who do you think I am now I want to define this sound a little bit more let's make it short just like my temper during Valorant One down. no way he camps that so I'm gonna put the envelope to these settings here put attack down hold up uh, this is the important knobs here decay and sustain this is what's going to determine the length. So around there. I don't usually use exact numbers because I just normally do it by ear. So if I play it. But I'm trying to make it shorter than it was. So to make it more plucky, these are the envelope settings that I use. It's good now, it just needs some movement. And we must activate this warp knob. Because you can't just put FM on the warp knob and expect it to do something. It's got to move so you can add and remove the textures that FM gives. So we set up an LFO. Let's make it look like this. Set it to trig mode, BPM, on, and 1 eighth. Now here's the metric. We're going to drag the LFO over to our warp knob and this activates it. So what this is going to do is it automates the knob turning from here to here. So now you can hear it actually moving. And the more you experiment with where the knob starts and how much LFO is on it will give you a lot of those cool textures and noises. So I like this here. Also, let's put filter. This is for even more movement and to create more harmonics because we are going to put OTT on this and OTT is going to grab all of those harmonics and make them huge. For this, I'm using phaser minus 12 and I'm going to enable the sub, as well as key tracking, so that the note stays in key. And I'm also going to put LFO on the frequency here, because when I move this, so we're actually adding harmonics by doing this, and it's giving a subtle movement. Right now, this sound isn't doing anything. It just sounds like 
the heck? But check this out. Hey, yo, you need vocals for this song? No, this is a serum tutorial. Okay, you need vocals? Easy. I got you. No, no, no. This is a serum. With today's sponsor, DistroKid, you can add synced lyrics to all your releases. Hey, wait a second. How are you getting those words to pop up? I didn't edit those in. <sighs> so if you have an awesome track and want to post a lyric on Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat, look, you can get them to pop up on your stories when you share them. This is all free with your DistroKid membership. Just click click here and we're gonna play uh, show you how to do this. We play the song and then you just push the button Anytime that oh push the button anytime the lyrics Is it and uh, to lyric lines BAM! It's available on Instagram! DistroKid also sends your lyrics to all streaming services, so sign up! Be sure to get 7% off your first year with my link down below. We got it! We're out here! So this right now needs the distortion setting that'll really give it that res sound. Click FX and open up distortion and it's this one, down sample. When I move the drive knob, you'll get even more textures from the bit reduction that's happening. And you see that when I'm turning the knob, it's giving even more movement. So whenever I hear something like that, I'll just put an LFO on it because I, I need that movement to keep going. And that's a sweet spot there. And then I just add compressor. And this is gonna be our first OTT. So turn on compressor, turn on a multiband. And I'm gonna turn the mix down on the distortion here too so that I can blend the two sounds that we just made together. So it doesn't sound like much yet, but it's a great foundation for all the processing that we're gonna do afterwards. So step two, the initial processing. Before I start, I'm gonna go over the order that I put the plugins in first. This way you can kind of get an idea where my brain is at when I'm working on making the noise. This doesn't necessarily mean it's the final order of the plugins. So if it's a bit confusing, I'm sorry, but just follow along as best you can or I don't know, just get good. So we start with the Wombo Combo, and that is OTT and Saturator. As I said, this brings out the initial harmonics of the sound. Play your sound back and turn the output and drive knobs to increase the Wombo Combo effect. Soft clip on. And now you can hear they're a lot more balanced with the drums. When I'm doing the Wombo Combo as well, I like to make sure that the output on the first saturator is down to avoid the distortion because I'm going to keep adding more stuff, right? By bringing out the initial harmonics from the Serum preset, this lets me make a decision on what kind of processing I want to add. And most of the time, I just add some kind of noise or distortion. And in this case, it is amp. I ended up using these settings and I'm just constantly adding more and more noise because OTT tends to pull really cool stuff out of the noise and it adds just such a nice spice to the sound. As we play this back, it's not enough. It's it just it's not enough. So this lovely plugin, Decapitator. Oh baby. I wanna make sounds, I wanna spend less time turning knobs and I just wanna get stuff done fast. Making big impactful changes so I can make better decisions on where the sound goes. Producer release! Uh, when are you he uses third party plugins. He's just a rich kid, classic YouTuber, can't make a sound without using expensive plugins and expect me to be able to buy it. Uh. But you have to remember, buying all the third-party plugins in the world is not gonna make you a better producer. Stop convincing yourself that you need that special plugin. Here's a hint, you don't. You need to learn the fundamentals. Then start working in third-party plugins into your workflow in ways that make production easier for you. Stuff that makes it faster for you to get your ideas out, okay? Got it? That's why I use Decapitator here. But if you are part of the stock plugin gang, don't you worry, I got you guys. Since Decapitator is a saturator, production words, am I right? I was able to emulate this exact effect with Ableton's saturator. These are the settings here. So if you don't have Decapitator, you're welcome. And this sounds super dope, so <laughs> thanks Ableton. By using the Wombo Combo to color the preset with Amp and Decapitator or Saturator, we have this nice 
clean, deep, nasty sound. Let's go. All we need now is to make it fit with everything else. So that is post-processing. I'm going to introduce you to the ultimate sound design tool in Ableton. Answer is going to shock you, not clickbait. Presenting the almighty EQ. Yeah, that's right. A lot of my sound design and sound shaping actually comes from EQ. Now look at this curve. Look at this graph. This is not a mixing curve. I'm not even gonna think about mixing until most of this song is done anyway. I'm using this EQ to shape this sound. So without it, Properly using EQ is going to naturally put your sounds a little bit better in the mix anyway. Once again, we're making impactful changes to help your sound fit in the overall context of your song. In this one, I've got a giant low cut because I know I'll be putting a sub bass in. And I don't want this sound to actually be bassy. And as the sound plays back, I sweep around until I get some nice harmonics. Oh, I like it right there. And I just leave it. This puts a nice thick boost to them so they're just very way more louder. If you're still having trouble with EQ in general, just think of it more as a bunch of volume knobs and you make certain sections of your sound louder or quieter as you sweep around the different frequency. All right now, just, just get good. Next up, I want to add a bit more movement and wideness to this sound. So little micro shift is the one and done solution to that. Producer release another third party plugin. No, stop. Stop that. Now for some final touches in order to like really make this very, very resi. Now some things you can do to customize this sound is you can actually automate this amp on and off and you can get different tones. So with the amp off, it sounds like this. Amp on. If you've noticed, I've also changed the octave of the note depending on whether the amp is on or not. So amp off, I've actually got it in a lower octave to capture a lot more of that nasty squelchy sound. But if I put it up, it works really well with the amp on. You can also experiment with the note length. So if a bit longer note, you get these longer drawn out. You can change up the rhythms. Lots of stuff you can automate inside this patch. Even automate the EQ to give it some sweepiness. Make that thing dance. If you want, you can go into serum change around the filter a lot of these flangey ones are really good inside this menu you can do a comb one and this gives you even more knobs to automate so turn some knobs see what sounds cool and if anything sounds cool as you're turning knobs just throw another lfo on it to give it that movement possibilities do be endless finally never Ever, never, never, never forget the sub bass. And this is where I play the full song, but I've got something cool planned for that. So as always, if you've learned something, if you like what I'm doing, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. We are so close to 10K and I want it. No, think bigger. 100K! Please help your boy out, but only if I've helped you out. So make sure to subscribe. You don't miss what I do next with this. I'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks for watching.